Okay guys, here is the finished product of all the t-shirts. As you can tell by the title, I'm teaching you how to tie-dye four different designs. So, the first design is of course the original tie-dye little swirl design. I'll put it right here. The second one is the bullseye. And then the third one is the crumple. And the fourth one is the reverse tie-dye, which is so cool. So if you guys like today's video, don't forget to like, comment, share, and subscribe, and let's get As into it. As you the can video. tell, my fingers were already pretty tie-dyed because I have done a couple of shirts. This is the bull the bullseye design. This is the original tie dye little circle design, and these are the crumple. So let me show you guys how to achieve these looks. So I am doing it outside. This is my setup. It's kind of tacky, but it's whatever. <laughs> so you do want to add water. Fill it up all the way to whatever tie dye kit you're using. Add water to the dyes, and you should get like this liquid. This liquid once you add water and shake it up really well. Of course, you wanna use plastic to protect wherever you're doing your tie-dye shirts at. I'm using uh, plastic bags because I don't have a tarp. So yeah. Now, disclaimer before I get into the steps, there are different ways on how to tie-dye. This is just one way to do it. So these shirts are dry. They're just plain white t-shirts and they're dry. What I do is I use a water bottle and I poke three holes into it and I wet the t-shirt just like this. You just squirt it on there. And I do this because the tie-dye, it works better, honestly, when shirts are wet rather than dry. So just squirt the water all along like this. And after you wet your t-shirt, you want to literally um, wring it out because you see how it's dripping? Um, that's not wanted. So wring it out until it's not dripping anymore. You know that you wringed it out enough because it's not going to drip anymore. So yeah. Okay, so then you want to take off any water that was already on the plastic or the bag that you're using and then set or sit down your t-shirt um on top of it okay for the like uh the cliche tie-dye look the little circular one you're going to need three rubber bands and your colors this shirt that i'm making right now is going to be red orange and yellow and a fork isn't necessary but i do use it because it like it makes the swirls come out way better. Now this next part um, is kind of hard to record with one hand, but what you want to do is stick the fork wherever you want the little twirl design to be, and you're going to twist like this, okay? And you're going to keep doing that until you get, you know, all of the shirt in the circular motion. Okay, so your shirt should look a little bit something like this after you twist it or twirl it. And then you want to place the rubber bands on the shirt. And like I just said earlier, you use three rubber bands. Okay, so your shirt should look something like this. Um, you want to make sure you have six different wedges or edges so you can put the colors in. And like I said, the colors are orange, red, and yellow for this shirt. What kind of tie-dye look you're going for? Um, a lot of people don't put like a lot of tie-dye. They leave like the edges white, but like I feel like it leaves too much room. Like, you know, when you tie dye, it's not supposed to be perfect because perfect does not look right at all. Like you're supposed to have fun with tie dye, you know? Okay, this is the finished product of the first shirt that I did or showed you guys how to do. The next step is you can use either saran wrap or a plastic bag. So grab one of those two and meet me in the next the next step. I use saran wrap because I feel like it's more easier or easier to use <laughs> because with the saran wrap, you could literally like mold it any way you want. Whereas with a plastic bag, it's just like a bag. It's just sitting in there. And like saran wrap allows for a more enclosed, tighter space. So what you wanna do is wrap this in saran wrap or put it in a plastic bag, remove all the air and make sure it's sealed like so you want to of course put it in the sun with either your other shorts or whatever just put it in the sun and allow for it to dry 
Let's move on to the next right, design. Guys, for the bullseye design t-shirt, you basically follow the same steps. You wet the t-shirt, you wring it out, you put it on a plastic bag, and you lay it flat. Now, for the bullseye design, first you want to decide where you want to have the bullseye stem from. You can do it from like the corners. Um, it's typically done in the corners. In the middle, it doesn't really have the effect that I've wanted it, like wanted it to have in the past, but you can also do it in the middle. So choose your corner or wherever you want your bullseye to be. This one I'm doing in the corner. So then you want to grab it like this and place your rubber band on the bottom of where you're holding it. Look, something like this. The next step is to um, grab your shirt, kind of vertical, and apply your rubber bands vertically. So I'm going to show you how to do that or how it should look. I'm using for this t-shirt is green I think I can't tell what this is so this is blue green and yellow and again like earlier you just want to apply this is the bullseye you want to put the colors in the desired areas the amount of rubber bands that you use varies on how close together or how far away you want the spaces or the um, colors to be okay guys so the colors actually turned out to be red blue lime green orange and yeah upon request of course um so this is how it should look after you add all of your colors again i like to have it a little blotchy like with the white spots so you can tell the difference of like the i colors. said earlier don't be afraid to have fun with tie-dye you know mix colors on one section or you know it looks like look at this i didn't plan it i actually mixed two colors but this looks so nice so this is the final look for the bullseye t-shirt and then, of course, you know, the next step is to either put it in the plastic bag or saran wrap it. It doesn't have to be straight in the line. You can literally bunch it up to make it fit into the bag or whatever. Just whatever works best for you. And then, of course, when you're done with it, you want to put it with the other shirts, put it to dry somewhere outside in sunlight for six to eight hours. Okay, guys, for the scrunch or the crunch look um, for the tie-dye look, Repeat the steps, as I said earlier, as wet the shirt, you know, wring it out, put the plastic down, and flatten it. Now, for the scrunch technique, I love this technique because it's literally the easiest. You just, like, scrunch. So then after you scrunch it, it should look like this, or however you scrunched it, it really doesn't matter. <laughs> and you really don't have to use rubber bands for this type of look, but I prefer to, so when I wrap it or put it in the bag, it stays together. So I used two rubber bands and I put them vertically. And of course, it still has the scrunch look to it. Now the colors we will be using for this shirt are blue and purple. Okay, for scrunch, you literally don't want to put it all in like one section. Like you do not want to put like blue, purple, and blue. It wouldn't, you know? Scrunch, you really just want to put it everywhere. As so. It would give it that more scattered, defined look we're going for with the scrunch technique. Of course, you don't have to have such dark colors. You can dilute the water or the dye as little or as much as you want to achieve your desired look. Um, you see the extra dye that's on the bag? With this look, I like to pick the shirt up and have the shirt absorb the leftover dye. So this is the final product, the final look of the crunch type of tie-dye yes did you want to saran wrap it or put it in the bag okay guys so to reverse uh tie-dye which is basically tie-dyeing um like shirts that are not white you're gonna need um a half a thing of water and fill it up halfway with bleach then of course you still want to follow the steps so you still want to wet this t-shirt down i'm gonna be using the water hose because um <laughs> I have put bleach in the bottle, as I showed you previously before, so I can't really put that all over the whole t-shirt. Of course, you're gonna wring it out and then place it on the black tarp or plastic bag. Okay. You still wanna use the rubber bands to shape the t-shirt in whatever design you wanna put them in. Okay guys, these are the two designs I chose for these two shirts. Okay, so these are the colors I'm using, which is, of course, the colors of the shirts. So pink, purple, 
black, yellow, blue, and green. So this next step depends on preference. You wanna take your bleach mixture and some people apply it to like just one part of the shirt while other people I've seen put it like all over the shirt. Either let these dry so they can lighten. Okay, and since this shirt was so dark, um, the purple one, I went ahead and added non-diluted bleach to it because the diluted one wasn't just, it wasn't meeting the, uh, meeting the requirements. So, just a little info for you. Okay guys, so these are how these shirts are looking so far um, with me leaving them out here in the bleach. As you can tell on this really dark pink shirt, it worked really well. Oh, oh, oh. Okay. So for this shirt, <laughs> the colors are the black, the pink, and then the yellow. So for the pink, I think um, since the shirt is already pink, I should just leave a space open, like blank for that. And of course, we're gonna put the yellow, black. Okay, let me move it over. Like, look at that color, uh, concerning. Okay, so for this one, I think I'm just gonna leave it alone because I really don't like how this looks. Like, I don't, I should've just like did a lighter pink. But we'll see tomorrow, who knows? After I wash it and stuff, the result might be different. So since that shirt came out like this, um, well, since that shirt came out like that, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, um, just leave this purple one like this. It looks good, I think, so we'll be fine. Okay, guys, this is the final result. Okay guys, so I had to do a voiceover for this part because by the time that I actually got to rinsing the shirts, it was like two in the morning. So basically you just wanna take this shirt out of the surround wrap paper or out of your bag and you wanna rinse it with cold water, okay? And of course you wanna do this until the water is clear. So scrunch it, you know, Twist it or do whatever you want, but make sure all the water is out. Make sure it's clear. Then you can, of course, get some scissors and cut the rubber bands. But this is after the first step, of course. This is a preview of how the shirt came out. Came out pretty good. I was pretty proud of myself. So these are the settings that I had it on. I had it on cold water, one rinse, delicate. Um, I had it on six minutes and a small load. The next thing you're gonna wanna do is add just a little bit of detergent to every load you wash. Now make sure that you do wash this, the um, shirts separately because if you don't and like put them on together, they will bleed, okay? <laughs> This is the next shirt. It came out really good. I love this shirt. This is the bullseye shirt. And then next is just going to be a little montage of all the shirts and how they came out or, you know, how they rinsed. This is one of the shirts that we did the crumple design on. And again, it came out so good. Going back to the shirt I put in the washer, um, it didn't bleed, it didn't fade, it remained the same. So that is good, so I'm really happy about that. Okay guys, here is the finished product of all the t-shirts. They have been washed and now I had um, let them sit out here to hang dry. And they came out pretty good. And then these two at the end are the reverse tie-dyed ones. And I don't know if you remember how like bad that one was looking. But it looks pretty good so you know don't doubt your results honestly because you don't know what's gonna happen expect the unexpected i have all of the styles here i have the cliche tie dyes the bullseye bullseye tie dye crumple for these three 
tie-dye and the bullseye. Comment down below what's your favorite style, which one you think came out the best. And thank you guys for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, share. And yeah, that's all I have to say. Peace.